This video is on percents, sales tax, and discounts. It is super important throughout this whole personal finance unit that we can convert back and forth between a decimal number and a percent. A good memory trick you can use is to think of this chart. So I'm gonna use D for decimal. So there's my capital D. And I'll use P for percent. And just think you are always going to move your decimal point two places. So it's always two hops that you are moving that decimal point. So really, it's just a matter of determining if you're going to move that decimal point two hops to the right, or if you are going to move that decimal point two hops to the left. So just look at what you currently have. If you have any number without a percent symbol on the end, then you have a decimal. You might have a fraction that you have to divide out to see what decimal exactly it represents, but as long as you do not see a percent symbol, then you have a decimal, in which case you should move your decimal point two hops to the right to get a percent symbol, to get a percent number, and then you would attach the percent symbol on the end of it. If, however, with whatever number they give you in the homework, you do see a percent symbol, then obviously you do have a percent, in which case you need to move your decimal point two hops to the left to have what I call a pure decimal number. But it's always two hops. Now all I have on the top of this screen is that percents are just simply the result of expressing numbers as part of 100. So technically you're either timesing by 100 or dividing by 100 when you're moving those decimal points to hops. And then everything we just summarized in that chart I have right here near the top of the screen. As we just discussed, expressing a decimal number as a percent. Step one, move the decimal point to the right two hops. Step two, attach that percent symbol. If you're moving backwards from a percent to a decimal, that's when you move the decimal point to the left and you remove that percent sign. Let's go ahead and try a few examples. And just keeping my little cheesy chart here in mind. I'm looking at example one. It says express five eighths as a percent. So express five over eight as a percent. So just keep in mind that any fraction bar really just means division. So first go ahead and divide that fraction out to see what decimal it actually represents. So in your calculator, go ahead and type in five divided by eight, enter or equals, depending on which calculator you have. When you type in five divided by eight, you should be getting the decimal of 0.625. You do not have a percent symbol in that original number which means you have a pure decimal. So to convert to a percent, like the question wants, we are going to move two hops to the right. We're gonna move that decimal point two hops to the right. So here's hop number one, here's hop number two. It lands you in between the two and the five. Let's go ahead and write that number a little bit nicer. So this is actually 62.5 percent, attaching your percent symbol as the final answer. So to summarize, divide your fraction out to see what decimal you actually have, and then just simply slide that decimal point two hops to the right, attach a percent symbol on the end, and done. Let's try another one. Looking at example two, we are going to express 13 over 80 as a percent. So that means type in 13 divided by 80 
into your calculator, you should be getting the decimal of 0 0.1625. 0 0.1625. There is clearly not a percent symbol yet, which means we want to convert to the percent. It's currently a decimal. So again, we're going to move that decimal point two hops to the right. So here's hop number one. Here's hop number two, lands us in between the six and the two. So writing this number a little nicer, this is 16.25. Go ahead and attach your percent symbol for the final answer, 16.25%. Example three is even easier. This is to express 0.47 as a percent. And you really can just ignore that zero in the whole number spot because yet again, we need to slide our decimal point two hops to the right. This one's even easier. I don't even have to divide any fraction out. I can just jump right in. So here's hop number one. Hop number two lands me at the end of the number, so after the seven. So this becomes 47% final answer. And again, when zero is in front, it's the first digit before a decimal point, obviously I can just ignore that zero, just drop it, so it's just 47%. Then example four says to express point 0, 0.023 as a percent. So again, we're gonna slide that decimal point two hops to the right. Here's hop number one. Hop number two lands us in between the two and the three. So this is going to be 2.3% as my final answer. Yet again, when that zero is in the first slot before a decimal, I don't even have to write it. So 2.3% final answer. You can probably guess what's going to come on the next slide. Now we're going to move the decimal point backwards. For example five, it says to express 19% as a decimal. So now we have a percent let me go ahead and rewrite that. When you don't see the decimal point, you can always assume it's sitting at the end of the number. So I can safely assume the decimal point is currently after the 19. Thinking about that diagram we drew on the previous slide, we currently have a percent. Our goal is to convert it to a decimal only. We always move the decimal point two hops and as we can see with this diagram we are going to move decimal point two hops to the left so here's hop number one here's hop number two it lands us before the one we get rid of the percent symbol since we have successfully converted this to a decimal so 19 percent as a decimal is 0.19 now it's up to you if you want to type it just like that into the homework or if you want to put the zero in the whole number spot, that works too. I know that's how your science instructors are going to prefer that you write these decimals. However, when we're plugging into mathematical formulas later in this chapter, I would recommend you just leave it as 0.19 without the zero. That way you are less likely to make a mistake when you're typing a bunch of stuff into the calculator. But point 19, final answer. Looking at example six, now they want us to express 180% as a decimal. Again, we can safely assume the decimal point is at the end of the number. We have a percent. We wanna move the decimal point two hops to the left to make it a decimal only. Here's hop number one, hop number two, between the one and the eight is the new location of that decimal point. Get rid of the percent symbol, rewrite it nicer. So this is going to be 
1.80 or you could just simply write 1.8. Obviously, you do not need to put the zero if it's at the end of a decimal part of a number. So 1.8, final answer. Looking now at example seven, it says express one fourth of a percent as a decimal. So even though they gave us a fraction, there is a percent symbol that's part of this number, so it is literally a percent. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to convert one fourth to a decimal, so just simply divide that out, one divided by four, either in your head or on your calculator. And when you divide one divided by four, when you divide that out, you get 0.25. Bring your percent symbol down. So yeah, this is a combination decimal percent, but because there is literally a percent symbol there, this is a percent type of number. They want us to convert this to a decimal so we're going to move the decimal point two hops to the left to get rid of the percent symbol. When I do that, let's go ahead and change the color to red. I'm already out of room to do any hops, so I'm going to need to insert zeros. So here's hop number one, I insert a zero. Here's hop number two, I insert another zero, get rid of the percent symbol. So I see that this is the same as 0 0.0025. Again, it's up to you if you want to put the zero in the whole number spot as well. But 0 0.0025, final answer. And then example 8, express 1 over 100% as a decimal. So first do one divided by 100, and that is going to give you 0 0.01. Bring down your percent symbol. So step one, divide that fraction out. Don't forget to drop the percent symbol down. It's part of the number. Now step two, we can do what the question wanted all along. Convert this to a pure decimal by simply moving that decimal point two hops to the left. So here's hop one, hop two. We need to insert two zeros this time. Get rid of your percent symbol. So this is going to be point zero, 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 one. So point three zeros and a one is the final answer. The first two formulas in this section deal with finding a sales tax amount and the total cost. For sales tax amount, it is a portion of the item's cost. And of in math means you're going to multiply. This is going to be two steps. So step one, go ahead and convert your tax rate to a decimal before it goes into a formula. And this is true for any percent number whatsoever in this financial math chapter. You always need to first convert it to a decimal only before it ever, ever goes into a formula. After you convert that into a pure decimal number, then the formula is you just simply take that tax rate as a decimal and you multiply it by whatever the item's cost is. After you know the sales tax amount, then you can figure out the total cost. By taking that sales tax you just calculated and simply adding it to the purchase price. So let's go ahead and see a couple of these in action. Looking at example nine, it says suppose that the local sales tax rate is 7.5% and you purchase a mountain bike for $894. Part A, how much tax is paid? So we said it's gonna be two steps before we can use that sales tax amount formula. Step one is to convert your tax rate percent into a decimal only. So it's 7.5%. 
thinking about what we discussed on the previous slides, to convert a percent backwards to a decimal, it's moving the decimal point two hops to the left. Here's hop number one. For the second hop, we've run out of room, so we need to insert a zero. Get rid of your percent symbol, so it's 0 .075 is your tax rate. Now, step two, we can multiply, use the formula. So we said it's going to be multiplication of your decimal times the item's cost. So I take my 0 .075, my tax rate is a decimal only, and I'm going to times it by the item's cost, which was $894. And when you punch that into your calculator, you should be getting $67.05 as the final answer to Part A. We are going to um, be rounding it to the nearest cent if you do end up with these decimal numbers, but 67.05 final answer. And now part B, what is the mountain bike's total cost? So we said for the total cost, we are going to just simply take that sales tax you calculated in part A and add it to the purchase price, in other words, the item's cost. So for total cost, the purchase price, the item's cost was $894. Now let's add it to our sales tax answer from part A, the $67.05. And when you add those two together, the total cost is $961.05. So as we can see here, when it's a more expensive item, like a bike, and you have this tax rate, it can really bring up, unfortunately for us, that total cost. And even just think of something that's more expensive, like a car <laughs> or a home. But that tax amount definitely can up these total costs. Let's try one more. So looking at example 10, suppose that the local sales tax rate is 6% and you purchase a tablet for $1,260. How much tax is paid is part A. So again, before I can use the formula, let's first convert this 6% to a decimal only. So 6% since we don't see the decimal point, we can assume it is sitting at the end of the number. So I'm going to move my decimal point two hops to the left to get it to be a decimal only. Here's hop one. Hop number two, I need to insert a zero. Get rid of your percent symbol. So 0 0.06 is your tax rate as a decimal only. Step two, now we're ready to use the formula. It's 6% of... The total cost of 1260 of meaning multiply. So take that tax rate and times it by the item's cost. So 0 0.06 times this 1260. So the taxes alone, well, when you punch this into the calculator, it's going to say 75.6, but this is a money amount. So we said with the previous example, if you get a decimal when it's a money amount, make sure you round to the nearest cent. So go ahead and add a zero on the end so that it's $75.60. Final answer. Now part B, what is the tablet's total cost? So we're gonna add purchase price plus the sales tax. Purchase price was $1,000. 260 plus the sales tax from part A, we said it was $75.60. And when you add that, you get $1,335.60. Final answer to part B.
On the previous slide, we talked about sales tax and what that does to the total cost. Now let's take a look at the discount amount and what that does to the sales price. So the discount amount, it's a similar format to the tax rate where you're gonna take your percent, which this time is gonna be the discount rate, and it first needs to be converted to a decimal. After you have that decimal, you're gonna multiply that discount rate as a decimal only by the original price. So again, we are multiplying. Makes sense because that discount amount is a percent of that original price, and we already said of means multiply in math. Once you know the discount amount, the sales price means you're gonna take your original price and you're gonna subtract that discount amount off for that final answer. Okay, so let's take a look at example 11. It says a gaming laptop with an original price of $1,460 is on sale at 15% off. Part A, what is the discount amount? So step one, before any percent ever goes into a formula, it needs to be converted to a decimal only. So step one, take that 15% discount. We're gonna convert it to a decimal only by moving the decimal point two hops to the left we can assume the decimal point is currently at the end of the 15. So here's hop number one, hop number two, means it becomes 0.15, get rid of the percent symbol. So 0.15 is the discount rate as a decimal only. So now step two, let's use the discount amount formula. Your discount rate, we just said was 0.15. You're going to times it by the original price, which was 1460. So in your calculator, go ahead and punch in 0 0.15 times 1460, and you should be getting $219 for the final answer for the discount amount. Now part B wants to know what is the gaming laptop's sale price, which is just simple, subtraction. So for the sale price, take your original price and subtract the discount amount. The original price was that $1460 minus the discount amount we just, just said is $219. So you're going to do the 1460 minus that 219 and that's going to give you a sales price final answer of $1,241. Let's go ahead and try one more. I'm looking at example 12. It says noise canceling headphones with an original price of $380 are on sale at 35% off. Part A, what is the discount amount? So first take your discount percentage, convert it to a decimal only. So 35%, so step one, we're gonna move that decimal point two hops to the left. So here's hop one, hop number two, it becomes 0.35, get rid of your percent symbol. Step two, the discount amount is your discount rate as a decimal, which we just said is 0.35 times your original price, which is 380 bucks. So we're gonna do 0.35 times your 380 And that is going to give you $133. So we got a discount amount of 133 bucks. Final answer for A. Looking at B, what is the sale price now of the headphones? 
So that's the original price minus the discount amount. Original price was 380 minus discount amount we just said is $133. So 380 minus your 133 is going to be $247 as your final answer to B. The next few formulas are going to ask you to calculate the percent change. So they might ask you for percent increase or percent decrease. They could also phrase it as percent gain or percent loss. Either way, it's ultimately the same formula. And these percents are used for comparing changes such as increases or decreases. It could be in sales, population, prices, and production. So it's a two-step process. So step one, here's the actual formula, is you're gonna first figure out the amount of increase or decrease, and then you're going to divide, so that's why they have that fraction bar there, you're gonna divide by the original amount. So it is the original amount that goes on the bottom, now, what's nice is with this Pearson homework, to figure out the amount of increase or decrease that's on the top of the fraction, it tends to be the same pattern. So it tends to be, and I'll go ahead and write this down, parentheses, because you do this first, you're gonna take the larger number of the two numbers you're comparing, and I'll just put hashtag for number, and you're gonna subtract the smaller number. Let me close these parentheses. I'm writing out of room for my big old handwriting. But it's going to be larger number minus the smaller number of the two numbers you're comparing. That's going to give you this amount of increase or decrease that they're talking about here on the top. And then you are going to subtract first is why I put parentheses around these phrases. So after you subtract those numbers, you are gonna divide, I'll use fraction bar for division, by whatever the original number or original amount was. Once you punch it into this formula, step two, convert your answer to a percent. You're gonna have some sort of a decimal that you're gonna to need to convert to a percent because keep in mind, this is a percent increase or decrease. So we do want our final answer to be formatted as a percent. So let's see a few of these. I'm looking at example 13. It says if 6 is increased to 10, find the percent increase. So let me go ahead and jot down my formula first. And I'm going to write it like how I wrote it with the little trick here. So I'm going to put parentheses, larger number, minus smaller number, close the parentheses, divided by the original number. It's my memory trick for this percent increase or decrease formula. And again, I know to use this formula because it literally says find the percent increase. Okay, so parentheses, my larger number, so I have 6 and 10 are the numbers I'm comparing, so clearly the, the larger number is 6, or excuse me, 10. 10 is clearly the larger number, minus the smaller number, rather, is 6. There we go. Close the parentheses, bring over your fraction bar. So here's where you really got to pay close attention to the way that this question reads. So they want the original number on the bottom. So the way this is worded is if 6 is increased to 10. So the starter number was 6. 6 is the number that received the increase. So 6, in this case, is the original number, the starter number, in other words. 
So now the hard part is done. So we're going to do the 10 minus 6 on the top first for 4. Bring over the division of 6. So now in your calculator, punch in 4 divided by 6. And that is going to give you 0.6 repeating. So that's about 0.6667 if you wanted to round it. So there's our answer as a decimal. We just plugged into the formula. We did step one. So now step two, let's convert our decimal answer to a percent. So to go from a decimal to a percent, let's move the decimal point two hops to the right. So here's hop one, hop two, and we get about 66.67. Let me rewrite that nicer, 66.67 as a percent. I'm already running out of room, so let me go ahead and rope this off. But the final answer to example 13 is 66.67%. Let's try another one of these to make sure we got them down. So I'm looking at example 14. It says if eight is decreased to two, find the percent decrease. So it says percent decrease. It's the same formula. So I'm going to use this formula up here that I'm circling in blue pen. So parentheses larger number. We're comparing 8 to 2. So the larger number is 8 minus smaller number is 2. Close the parentheses divided by we want the original number on the bottom. Look at the way it's phrased if 8 is decreased to 2. So my starter number that received the decrease is 8. So now let's do the 8 minus 2, which is 6 first on the top. We divide last. So 6 divided by 8, when you divide that out, gives you 0.75. So step one is done. We use the formula, we got a decimal. So now step two, we need to reformat this decimal as a percent. So let me bring that 0.75 down. So to get it to be a percent, let's move the decimal point two hops to the right. So here's hop one, hop two, and it, the decimal point gets moved to the end of the number so this is the same as 75%. So 75% is the final answer to example 14. Same formula, but let's go ahead and see a real life example with prices of this. I'm looking at example 15. It says a pair of jeans regularly sells for $135. The sale price is $60.75. Find the percent decrease of the sale price from the regular price. So it's saying find the percent decrease. So that tells me let's use the same formula yet again, which is the parentheses, the larger number minus the smaller number. Close your parentheses divided by the original price, the original number. The two numbers we're comparing are going to be $135 to $60.75. So parentheses, clearly the larger number is 135 minus the smaller number is $60.75. Close your parentheses all over. Okay, let's take our time with this bottom number the original number. So let's reread the question again. A pair of jeans regularly sells for 135. So that's the normal price. It's gone on sale and the sales price is the $60.75. But the regular price is 135. So that tells me 135 was the original price, the regular price. So 135 goes on the bottom. So let's go ahead and subtract the top numbers. So when you do 135 minus 60.75, 60 
you are going to get 74.25. Then go ahead and divide that by 135 and you are going to get 0.55. So step one, the formula is done. We get 0.55. Now, let me rewrite the 0.55. Step two, it is a percent decrease. So I need to reformat this answer as a percent. So we need to slide that decimal point two hops to the right and we get 55%. So 55% is the final answer for example 15. Example 16 says John Tesh, while he was still co-anchoring Entertainment Tonight, reported that the PBS series The Civil War had an audience of 13% versus the usual 4% PBS audience, quote, an increase of more than 300% is what he claimed. Did Tesh report the percent increase correctly? So when we compare those percentages of audience views, is that really an increase of more than 300%? That is what we're going to examine. So we're talking percent increase still. So that means that I need that same formula from the previous slide. So that was parentheses your larger number minus your smaller number. Close the parentheses divided by the original number. And the two numbers that we're comparing to plug into this formula is the 13% audience versus the usual 4% PBS audience. So parentheses, so clearly 13 is gonna be our larger number, minus four is gonna be the smaller, divided by, okay, let's be careful here with that original number. So we gotta reread the question to see which is the original percentage number, 13 or four, so it says, reported that the PBS series The Civil War had an audience of 13% versus the usual 4% PBS audience. So the regular number, the starter number is 4%. So 4% is the regular number. So there we go. We have 13 minus 4 on the top for 9. Then divide your four that's on the bottom. So when you do nine divided by four, you have 2.25. Now I know this is a little bit confusing because the numbers we're comparing in this are percentages for a change. However, think of it this way. So even though you have percentages on the top and your bottom of this formula fraction, those percentages cancel each other out. So this 2.25 is a decimal only is what I'm getting at. So you still need to do step two, which is to convert this 2.25 decimal to a percent. So even if you're putting in percentages into the percent increase decrease formula, you will still end up with a decimal only at the end, and you still need this step two of converting it to a percent. So go ahead and slide your decimal point two hops to the right, and we see that 2.25 becomes 225 as a percent. So let's go ahead and look at this quote from John Nash. So he said that the percent increase was more than 300%, that is a lie because we just figured out that the exact percent increase was 225%. So no, John Nash did not report the news correctly. I'll just write no and circle it because it was a 225% increase, not a more than 300% increase. Example 17 
says, suppose you paid $1,200 in taxes. During year one, taxes decrease by 20%. During year two, taxes increase by 20%. Part A, what do you pay in taxes for year two? So whenever it's a harder question like this, whether they go by year one, this happened, year two, this happened, or in some of the homework problems, they might say in month one, this happened, now month two, this happened. I would strongly encourage you to begin by drawing some sort of a table or picture to kind of see what's going on here with these numbers. So I'm going to draw a chart which shows the layout of these numbers with each of the two years they're describing here. So we have a year one row and we have a year two row and then the middle column this is going to be the amount of increase or decrease. The amount of, I'll just put INC for increase slash I'll put DEC for decrease and then my last column heading is going to be the total paid in taxes since that's what they're asking us about in part A they want to know what did we pay in taxes for year two so eventually we'll get there but let's go ahead and one year at a time and as we reread the question Let's look at year one. So it says, uh, so suppose you paid $1,200 in taxes. During year one, taxes decrease by 20%. So as we discussed earlier in this video, before you ever, ever use a percent in any formula or calculation, first step is to convert this to a decimal. So 20% you're going to move the decimal point two hops to the left and that becomes 0.20 or 0.2 you can read it either way get rid of the percent symbol so 0.20 or 0.2 so I'll just say 0.2 and it's 20% so the taxes decrease by 20% so 20% of what you originally paid of means multiplication, so I'll use parentheses for times, of $1,200 is what you originally paid. So let's do 20% or 0.2 times 1,200. And when you calculate that, that ends up giving you $240. Keep in mind that the taxes decreased in year one, so I'm gonna do a little down arrow just to remind myself that it's a $240 decrease year one. So now I go over to the final box in the year one row, and that was the total paid in taxes. So since my taxes decreased by 20%, I'm going to subtract when it's a decrease. So we originally paid $1,200, and I'm gonna minus that 240 I just got in the previous box. Again, I'm subtracting because it's a decrease. So when I do 1200 minus the 240, at the end of year one, I see that we paid $960. Now we are in year two. So year two, it says, during year two, taxes increase by 20%. We already know that 20% as a decimal is 0.20 or 0.2. So I'm going to do 0.20 or 0.2. Let me do a darker color. This one's harder to see with this lime green. I guess I'll just go back to red. So 0.20 or 0.2 of, so here's the catch, of what you paid the previous year in taxes. So during year two, taxes increased by 20%. They increased from the 960 that you paid at the end of year one. So with any of these harder questions in the My Math Lab homework, where they go one year at a time or one month at a time, you're always using the most previous total in the new calculations. So I'm not using the 1200 anymore, 
I'm bringing down the 960. So 0 0.2 times 960, that's 20% of 960, when I punch that into the calculator, gives me $192. Now keep in mind that this is an increase in year two. So I'm gonna do a little up arrow just to remind myself this is an increase. So now when I go to the total paid in taxes of year two, I did pay 960 the previous year. So again, I'm always using the previous years uh, in my calculations, my previous year's total in my calculations that is. And because it's an increase this time, I'm going to add this 192 I just got as the amount of increase. So 960 plus 192 means at the end of year two, I have paid $1,152. And that's what they wanted all along for part A. It said, what do you pay in taxes for year two? Well, we paid 1152 would be my final answer. But you can see again, I did each calculation one box at a time. I started one year at a time, and then I did the amount of increase or decrease first, and then I went over to the total paid, and if it was a decrease, I subtracted that amount, whereas if it's an increase, I added that amount, and again, always to the most recent calculations. Same question, so I'm gonna be able to use this table most likely again to help me. Looking at part B, it says, how do your taxes for year two compare with what you originally paid, namely the $1,200? If the taxes are not the same, find the percent increase or decrease. So to begin, let's go ahead and figure out which two numbers we're comparing. So it says, how do your taxes for year two, so that's that 1152 that I'm circling in red pen right now. I'm gonna be comparing that number with what we originally paid, which they said was the 1200. So clearly these taxes are not the same. So let's go ahead and figure out our percent increase or decrease. Now, let's keep in mind that we started with the 1200. This was the original amount. If we go back to this original question and reread it, so 1200 was the original number, and we ended at the end of two years with the 1152. So this is the ending number. So clearly, we have paid less in taxes if we compare from the original amount of 1200 to 1152, since obviously 1152 is smaller than 1200. So since our final answer, our funny, uh, final money amount is smaller, that means that we are looking for a percent decrease. So this is going to be a percent decrease. I will label it. And if you look up the formula from the previous slide for percent decrease, it's parentheses your larger number minus your smaller number and we're gonna divide all that by the original amount or the original number. So, of the two numbers I've circled, the larger number is 1,200, minus the smaller number is the 1,152. Close your parentheses. Divided by the original number goes on the bottom, the original amount you paid in taxes was the 1,200. The hard part is done, so now let's go ahead and compute. So if I do the top first, since it's in parentheses, 1200 minus 1152 is 48, which I'm gonna divide by the 1200. So if you type that into your calculator, 48 divided by 1200 gives you 0 0.04, 0 0.04. But keep in mind, this is a percent decrease. So we need to last step, convert your decimal to a percentage, which means simply move that decimal point two hops to the right. So 0 0.04 is the same as 
percent. So this is a 4% decrease that you paid in taxes from the original 1200 down to 1152 for the final answer. But feel free to draw this little table like we did in part A. Whenever they're talking about in year one, this amount went up and now in year two, it's down or maybe they're gonna go one month at a time instead of year at a time, but either way, feel free to draw this little chart so we can see the layout of the numbers and that will help you to answer all these different question parts for the harder questions.